wonderful people i pray that you guys are blessed and highly favored welcome back to my channel and i hope that life has been treating you well regardless of what is going on me and my kids just watched soul if you haven't watched that movie for the second time or animation for the second time and that film just remind me of being grateful for the littlest things in life and I think the pandemic and everything that's been going on since 2020 to 2021 especially the beginning of 2021 is teaching us life is teaching us to have gratitude for the most simplest thing just waking up in the morning just having a breath you know just being able to see our children see our loved ones and just appreciate the little things in life that we usually take for granted. So anyways, today I am answering a question that I got from one of my followers on Instagram. If you're not with me on Instagram, please go and follow me, interact with me and send in your questions. And um, she has been struggling with her faith, with believing in a God, you know, and um, one of the questions she wanted me to answer was, um, about surrendering to God. Now, for me, surrendering to God came from a place of desperation. When I look back in my life, there were many times, many opportunities that I was giving to give my life to God, but I refused to do that because I was enjoying life. I was enjoying the partying. I was enjoying the disrespecting of my, my mother and and disrespecting of others people and not having accountability for my behavior and my actions. I was enjoying drinking and, and living it up and sexing it up and not having anyone to answer to. And I enjoyed that life more than the thought of giving my life to a God who would then clean me up and put me on the right track and have me live a holy life because I was thinking, you know what, when I'm older, when I've done my thing, then I'll give my life to God. Let me live my life. I'm young now. YOLO, okay? And so I understood her question when it comes to surrendering because many of us don't just surrender like that. Some of us were what my husband will call goat. We are goats, okay? We are not sheep. We weren't born sheep. We were born goat. We are stubborn tough-headed and we don't learn easy okay so um surrendering for god came for me at a time when i've done it all you know i've had several partners several sexual partners i've had three baby daddies i've had you know a time of um smoking weed drinking up sexing up partying up and um, as I lived my life, I realized that there was something that I was searching for. There was something, there was a void in me. And I was trying to fill this longing, this desire in me with anything, anyone. I was trying to fill that emptiness, fill that, door, dark, that darkness, that void. And it came to a point, I was 24, had no purpose, had accomplished nothing in life. All I had to show for my life was my reckless behavior, my abusive relationships, my three children. Well, of course, is a blessing, but at that time, I was not in a space to see kids of a blessing. I'm saying like, I'm, I'm young. I have three kids. I have a whole lot of responsibility. And I'm a single mother on top of that. I have no help. I'm on welfare. I am on benefit help. And my life was saying nothing. Had no career. Had no form of income. If the government decide to stop sending me money, stop housing me, stop feeding me, stop paying me. I literally had nothing. No clothes because their money bought my clothes. My kids would have nothing. I had nothing literally absolutely nothing and I came to a place after my last breakup 
with my third baby daddy i was like what what what, what? <laughs> like what is going on you know what i mean like i'm in this these relationship and I'm, I'm investing my time i'm investing myself and i feel like i'm all that i'm feel i feel like i'm quality you know but my relationships aren't working out you know and i think that was something that i put a lot of my focus on a lot of my focus was on my relationships okay I was not focusing on developing myself becoming more of a um, person investing more in me you know gaining knowledge gaining skills gaining wisdom you know getting out of this this narrow mindset of relationship you know being being a girlfriend being a wifey but establish who, who am i who am i i'm 24 three kids single mother on welfare like who am i right and so i got to a state where i was literally i was sick and tired of life i was i was done i was done and i found myself after my third child my my third you know breakup and this is a guy that i was engaged to um thank god that didn't go through but at the time i wasn't seen as clearly as i'm seeing today right and so my whole world was shattered right and so i go into a deep depression state um i didn't even know how bad it was until i think two years ago i was doing my child care child minding business and they they have to do a medical and they were like uh, because of your medical record you have to be psychologically assessed to see if you are medically healthy or mentally healthy to take care of children and so going through that process i got my medical form my medical you know history and i was shocked because i did not know that they had me down as mentally unstable you know so on my medical record i was mentally unstable depressed um suffering from postpartum and uh, possibly suicide like it was pack it was pack you know and so it made me realize how far gone i was without even realizing and here's the thing like sometimes we put on this appearance because i don't believe anyone in my family or in my life knew that i was going through that and i personally did not know that i was going through that right i was so far gone but i always you know if i dressed up i dressed up i look good but looking good is not mentally healthy like just because you look good does not mean you're mentally stable right and so um i was really in a bad place i became suicidal i really meditated like consistently thinking about dying and the only thing that really kept me rooted on this earth was the fact that i was thinking about my three children i was thinking who's gonna take care of them you know who's gonna love them you know who's gonna pick up for them and fight for them you know because i felt like all of my life i was fighting and i'm thinking okay who's gonna fight for them when i'm gone and that kept me rooted and i remember looking for someone to give my children to and realizing that most people around me were broken were broken my family were broken we were broken beings, you know? And so out of desperation, being torn between, you know, being miserable in my body, in my life, and but staying alive for my children and being torn between killing myself and having peace, you know, I was having a fight. I was in a battle for Jesus Christ. I did put it in my book that... I'm sure it was chapter two, Taming Tongues. Yes, chapter two, Taming Tongues. I put it in my book that um, it came to a point where I was hearing voices to kill my children. Like I was hearing voices to kill my kids. And um, I thank God for 
my mother and my twin sister that I was able to call on my mom that my mom actually my mom recently just traveled back to the UK when I was going through that phase you know and um she came and she went into prayer mode like literally and and this is something I I didn't understand I didn't understand speaking in tongues at the time. I just thought she was making a bunch of noise. I thought that here we go. Mom is being mom. Mom is acting crazy. This is where I get my craziness from. But my mom went into prayer mode for like a good 15 to 20 minutes. And whatever was happening to me with these hearing of voices to, to kill my kids, um, left me. I never experienced that again. But if you want more details, of that day when I um, felt to kill my children I, I saw it I experienced it pick up my book um, it is on Amazon you can get the Kindle one which I think is seven pounds or you can get the hard copy which is 23 20 something pounds but you know I thank God for that but out of desperation I gave, like, I literally had nothing to lose, guys. I had nothing to lose. I had nothing to hold on to. You know, I I was losing my mind. My life was a mess. I didn't feel like I can take care of my children, you know, and um, I had nothing. Like, I, I literally had nothing, you know what I mean? And so, basically, I out of desperation prayed and my prayer was so short <laughs> you know and I, I'm gonna do a video because another question I was asked is how to pray like my prayer was so short but I knew that my prayer was genuinely from the depths of my heart I needed help and as far as I was concerned no one can handle my situation. The doctor's gonna handle it. The psychiatrist's gonna handle it. The medications gonna handle it. The sex, the addictions, the drugs could have handled it. The partying could have handled it. The relationships could have handled it. If I name it, nothing. But I did see prayer work. I did see my mom pray. And I did see when she prayed that voice and that presence that I felt lifted. And I pray, guys, I prayed, right? And I I just, I said to God, I remember saying to God, I was on Feltham High Street in London, Feltham High Street. And I remember just crying and walking on the high street with my babies. And um, I remember looking up and asking God, this is my life, <laughs> like seriously? like really like this is me this is me right like is this my life okay and i remember that humbling time when i said help me help me help me i didn't know anything about no holy ghost i didn't know anything about no no jesus christ i didn't know anything about any um encounters i didn't know any religious speeches religious prayers i just knew that i was desperate i prayed and something happened that i couldn't explain but i understand now that it was the spirit of god in me and peace like a peace that i've never felt in my life a peace came across me that in that moment somehow i knew I knew everything was gonna be okay. I could not explain it. I could not, everything in my life changed, but it wasn't overnight. I didn't realize things were happening, but when I think it came like 2015, I was reflecting on how dramatically my life had changed since that day. And I, before I did this video, a scripture came to me and it is proverbs 9 10 and it says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy one is understanding 
And I believe by giving my life to God was a, it started a whole new beginning of my whole life. Like everything that I had experienced that I've gone through was erased out of my life and removed and a whole new life opened for me because I decided out of desperation that I needed help from a God that I hated, that I go, from a God that I despised, from a God that I didn't want anything with because I blamed him for everything. It's your fault that I'm alive. It's your fault that I was born. It was your fault that I had sex and had three babies out of marriage with three people. It was your fault that I had nothing to my name. It's your fault that I was uneducated with no career path, no plans, no future, no purpose. I blamed him for it. If it rained on a day that it, I felt like it shouldn't have rained, it was God's fault. I blame God for everything. And it came to a point where I started, it's like my life flashed before my eyes, guys. And I started taking responsibility for the choices that I made. And I refused to say, I did that. I chose to have sex early. I chose to be in those relationships. I chose to drop out of school, not once, not twice, three times. I chose. These decisions were mine. And this is my life because of the choices that I made. And yes, it was lack of knowledge. Yes, it was ignorance. But it wasn't God's fault. I had to take responsibility for the choices, for the friends, for the crowd, for the parties, for the drinking, and for the events that occur in my life because I chose to be in certain places, to hang around with certain friends, to, to not study, but to go drinking and smoking and flop out of university. I chose those things and I had to take responsibility for the choices that I made in life. But after I chose to pray to a God that I once hated and despised, but I was desperate for help. After I chose to reach out to a God for help, it is true that he is forgiven. It is true that he is kind. It is true that he is merciful because after I prayed that simple prayer, my life changed and it wasn't overnight. I had to put in the work. I had to decide not to have sex. I had to decide not to be in silly relationships. I had to decide not to go to the parties. I had to decide not to drink. I had to decide to let go of some friends that weren't even bad, but the things that they would get into, the smoking, the drinking, I had to decide to let them go. Not that they were bad friends, but because I, I needed a change in my life you know I needed a change for my children I needed a change for my future for our future after giving my life to God guys if I tell you how much God has transformed my whole being and my whole life right and I'm not where I want to be because now I have plans you know, now I have a vision. Now I have a purpose. Now I have a destination that I want to get to, right? But even though I'm not there yet, guys, I am way, 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 way in a better place than I was before I gave my life to God. And so surrendering is a personal choice. As I said, there were many times that people spoke to me about God, loved ones spoke to me about, about God. I remember this woman, she used, it was a pastor's wife. She used to come and pick me up and I would wear my, my club wear to church. And I, when I look back and I saw how this woman took care of me and loved me in my club wear, loved me when I was wearing my money dresses to, to church, to sit down in front of her husband, love me. I, I don't know where she is, but if I ever get the chance, 
to love on this woman and to tell her thank you. I never felt judged by her. I never felt looked down on by her. You know, I never knew. But she loved me good. You know, and I know that she's a part of my transformation. I know this woman prayed for me. And I, I thank God for her. I don't know where she is. I don't even remember her name. But I pray that God will bless this woman. I pray that God would just will honor her. Like honor her. And, and celebrate her openly. Because of how she, she loved me. On judging me. But I encourage you guys. Do not, do not think that giving your life to God is a bad decision. I know a lot of religious people make it look a type of way. But when you put religion aside, because this was one of the reasons I never gave my life to God early, was because I saw my mother in the club and I saw my mother in the church. I saw my mother dressed from head to toe. But I saw my mother in mini shorts. And so I, I had this, this notion that Christians are hypocrites. And I feel that's because a lot of people didn't tell us that Christians ain't perfect people. The Bible says we fall short of his glory. No matter if I dress to my, from my head to my toe, even dress up, cover my eyes and my mouth and my neck. I still fall short of God's glory. He says that my holiness, my righteousness is like a filthy rag. And no matter what I do, I will never be holy enough for God or for anyone. But that is the reason why Jesus Christ died for me. And Jesus Christ died for you. So that when God look at us, he doesn't see us. He see the blood of the lamb. He see the blood of God. And so I want to encourage you, do not take, do not take the decision to give your life to Jesus Christ lightly. When you choose to do it, do it all wholeheartedly. Make a conscious decision that I'm going to give my life to God and I'm going to put my all in it. Make this the, the, the most important relationship in your life. You see how you will be in a relationship and you put in your all? Putting your all to do what the person like. Putting your all to impress, to dress, to, to, to get that person attention. Do that for God. Do that for God. Make the conscious decision that, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore. You know? And give your life to God. And I promise you. You will never regret it if you stick to it. Because there were times that I gave my life to God. And, I, and I, I didn't last a day. I gave my life to God today and be in the club tomorrow. I didn't stick to it. I didn't, I didn't commit to the relationship. But this time, because I was desperate, I committed and through committing to God, I've seen a traumatic, I mean traumatic, traumatic change in my life. And so before I go, I just want to pray with you to allow you to ask God for forgiveness. Allow you to ask God to, to reveal his truth to you, to allow you to know who you are in God. This is a relationship, guys. A relationship. And so the more you get into his presence, the more you read his word, the more you spend time, the more you will see who he is in you and be guided and led into the plans and the purpose he has for your life. Let us pray.
God is so good, guys. He is good. He is so good. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I pray for anyone who's watching this video, God. That, Lord, you will touch their hearts and touch their minds, oh God. Father, I pray that you will touch their hearts, oh God. Touch their minds, oh God. Touch their souls, Lord. Whatever it is that is preventing them, Lord, from, sur from surrendering completely to you, Lord, I pray that you will remove every blockage. Father, silence every lie and every voice of the enemy, O oh God. Reveal your truth to them. Reveal your will for them. Reveal your heart to them, O oh God. And I pray that in this moment, that they will make that decision to say yes to you, Lord. That they will say that short prayer and say, Lord, help me. Help me to see you for who you are. Help me to grow in a relationship and in fellowship with you. Help me to understand. Give me knowledge. Give me wisdom. Heal me and make me whole. Wash them with the blood, Lord. Wash them and release them from every bondage, every cage, every jail, oh God, every mental illness, Lord, everything, Lord. Father, for you delivered me from so much, and I know you can do it for them, Lord. Father, I pray for your mercy. I pray for your forgiveness, and I pray for your grace. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. I hope this video helped you with your journey and with your relationship with God. And I want to encourage you. Saying yes to God is the best thing you ever do in your life. It's the best decision that you will ever make. And when you say yes and you commit to your yes, you commit to your relationship. Trust me. You won't have any regrets. I've been... Going six years in now, it's the best decision yet. And I want to encourage you, make that decision and don't look back. God bless you guys. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Remember to like. Remember to share. God bless you.